Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It is Markets in the Morning. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Welcome to Markets in the Morning. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2024. This is Markets in the Morning, where we take a look at the price action of the cryptocurrency market, including the Bitcoin price chart, which back to $72,000. Take a look over there at the altcoin market. Uh-oh, all in green. And then we take a look over there at the United States stock market, which is set to open up in the next two minutes along with precious metals like gold and silver and the U.S. dollar currency index, or the DXY. We also take a look over there at any type of financial news that is going on to start off our day or kick off our week in the circumstance, along with any type of crypto news that seems important or relevant. Lastly, we hang out with the chat and have a good time and turn into goofballs for the last half of this thing. Otherwise, we try to act like adults and pretend uh, pretend we are adults uh, here in the first half of it. But taking a look at it, good news, guys. So uh, if, you, if you didn't catch it, I did the markets in the morning over the weekend uh, on Saturday because I was absent uh, the majority of last week, or at least three three days last week. Uh, the good news is we don't have, have nothing in the pipeline until May. So we should be good for the rest of April and uh, without anything. And then I have a trip in May and then we should be done for a while and just back on regular schedule. But like I mentioned, it's a busy time of the busy time of the year for me. All right, enough rambling. Let's dive into what's going on in markets. Taking a look over there at Bitcoin. As you can see, I've got a little arrow pointed over there. I've already fully recorded a video. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it should be out about an hour after uh, markets in the morning is completed. But I'm talking about this over there in the video that I've put out. Uh, Bitcoin had a very interesting close there to end out the the week there um, where the price did get a, a good little rally back up in there and held itself there into the candle close there yesterday for Sunday. And if you take a look over here, one thing that's pretty interesting is just how these weekly candles have actually been doing in here. You can see that we had weekly close struggling there at the previous all-time high struggles. It gets through. Last week, big whipsaw down, and it gets all the way back down to 64,700, 64,600. When we did markets in the morning, so every day, every time I uh, start a new markets in the morning, I pretty much just reuse the stream settings from the previous one. Sometimes I'll miss something and you guys may notice that like I'll accidentally have like markets in the morning will accidentally have like the wrong date in the title uh, or accidentally have the thumbnail from a past markets in the morning because I can reuse the stream settings. Uh, but when I uh, went to reuse the stream settings from what happened on, on Saturday when we did it, we were at sixty seven thousand dollars. And so here we are a few days later, two days later. Now we're back at seventy two. But as it went to close the week, you could see it went and got right back above that previous all-time high. And here we are on Monday. Boop. Nice little little pop happening there for Bitcoin. So still holding itself, not showing any weaknesses as of yet for Bitcoin. Still holding those daily lows happening in there. So fingers crossed we can get some good action to come out of Bitcoin here uh, in the coming weeks. I mentioned this on Saturday that we have earnings season coming up here in April. So we do have a few earnings reports that happen here uh, later in this week. Um, but really, it's next week where earnings starts to really kick off and get going. And the question ends up being, will we end up seeing uh, any of these companies announce that they've added Bitcoin to their balance sheet in the form of the ETF. Hard to know, right? The the only reason that that idea even gets presented is when we look at th look throughout the entire market, when we look at things like the altcoin market and see where we are. Obviously, we're battling against the 702 retracement over here on others. We've gotten all the way back to the retrace, right? This is where things get sketchy AF um, on whether or not we're going to be able to get through those retraces or not. And when we look to Bitcoin's historical behavior, if you at least you go back to 2020, you go back to the last cycle that we ended up having for Bitcoin, uh, by the time the altcoin market got to this level, 
Bitcoin was much higher. Bitcoin was actually all the way up in here already uh, once the altcoin market got back to those retracement levels. So uh, we'll, we'll dive into that in today's video. We'll talk about the price action of how we've gotten to where we've at, gotten to where we are at right now, how similar that was. Uh, but what we were just talking about, right, is whether or not in the earnings reports we're going to end up seeing anything for the ETF. I hate guessing narratives. It's dumb. It's stupid. We, we all try to do it and we're all just going to constantly be incorrect because markets tend to price in known information and it's when surprises come. And so if we're going to accurately predict uh, a narrative, well, then the market would already price it in. But point being is that all of our price action here is actually way more representative of us being much further along for Bitcoin and what was the actual narrative and thing that ended up happening right in there. It was the announcement of Tesla. It was the announcement from Elon Musk that Tesla had added Bitcoin to their balance sheet. It had added spot. Um, lot, not many companies followed suit in doing something like that, but now that obviously is very easily accessible. So we'll see if that ends up being the case and that ends up being our narrative, narrative driving force. So I talked about that on Saturday. If you missed markets in the morning, anyway, earnings season kind of kicks off this week and then it really gets into full blown steam, uh, the next couple of weeks after that. So we'll, We'll see if that ends up being the case. Of course, I'm cheering for that. I'm not an anti-Bitcoiner. I, I cheer for Bitcoin uh, all the way. But otherwise, we all know where we're at. We're at this point where we need expansion to come in. Um, and, it, and one of those things, like people are saying, hey, where's retail? Where's retail? Like if you look at like Google Trend Searching um, or the Coinbase down app downloads, uh, that like it's not at like peak retail, right? Like where are they, right? And retail always tends to come in at the top. Right, retail does not come in and buy during the depths of despair and accumulate or anything like that. Retail piles in the euphoric retail buying comes in whenever there's st victory stories, hearing stories of people getting rich overnight and making tons of money. That's when retail ends up piling in, and that was no different here in 2021. Once we got to the peak, that's where you have Wall Street bets. That's where all the laser eyes came out. The diamond hands comes out. That all comes out at the peak. That is not something that happens the whole way up. That movement happened here. It's where it started. It's where it ended <laughs> as well. So. Hopefully we get something that uh, ends up doing that. And that's where we end up getting the catapult to be able to escape from these retracements. But until then, we're all just patiently waiting for it to go. Um, but a positive thing to see over there to see Bitcoin be able to do that again with a, a weekly close uh, holding above the previous all time high. Um, and now hopefully, uh, hopefully something comes. So. All right, there you go. Still, again, like we just said, at the retracement levels there for the altcoin market, like I mentioned last week, it's going to be kind of repeat. <laughs> There's going to be the people, hey, you always say the same thing. Uh, well, we've been in this range for 25 days. <laughs> so until the range breaks, we will be like that. Uh, as for Ethereum, Ethereum, of course, has gotten all the way back above all retracement levels, back down, fighting now back at, at 702. Again, this is one of those behaviors that we saw for Ethereum back in 2020 that showed up here, not with Bitcoin back at its all-time high, but more with Bitcoin being significantly higher once we actually saw Ethereum doing this type of price action. So, Things are okay, um, but looking at total, of course, story is the same thing. Total two, excuse me, this is the altcoin market, including Ethereum and all the stable coins. As for XRP, still just humming along in its range, waiting for the big stuff to come out. Last week, we got the announcement, Ripple, they're going to do, uh, they're going to create their own stable coin to compete with Tether and to compete with uh, USDC, and initially be launched over there on uh, the XRP Ledger and on Ethereum. Fan fantastic. Exciting. Um, I've been seeing all the stuff swirling out there. I don't know what this narrative is about XRP as a stable coin. <laughs> They're launching a stable coin on XRP. I don't I don't know. We're going to not touch that with 10 foot pole, but if you've been on Twitter, it's been some interesting narratives about XRP being a stable coin. I, I don't know. If anybody asks me about that, I'm going to divert that to the people telling you that it's a stable coin. Uh, as for the stock market, now that the stock market is open, Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 47 points, which is 0.13%. The S&P is up 1.42 points, which is 0.03%. And the NASDAQ oop, slips down a little bit, 11 points down, which is 0.06%. So they're up a little bit more in pre-market. Looks like they're kind of settling now. RTY uh, or the Russell 2000 looks like it's having a little bit of a 
green start to the morning. Again, in the last week, we got all the way back up to that 618 retracement, but still unable to get through there. Highly bizarre behavior to see this happening for the Russell, where it's not chasing along with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ in all past expansions uh, during the entire post-great financial crisis. We've always seen it go with it. Still just not quite getting there. Um, the thing about gold, gold sets another new all-time high this morning, still continuing its move up. Again, one of those weird things to see happening in markets or expansions into all-time highs is that post Post great financial crisis, this is again another one of those things we haven't seen before where gold typically will get rejected and hammered down on expansions from the stock market and expansions that come with Bitcoin. These are the Bitcoin bull runs. These are the escaping to the new all-time highs. These are the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Russell 2000s escapes into the new all-time highs where gold gets pummeled. Yeah, here we go. Gold in an actual breakout. Silver this morning got through its 786 retracement of the range that has lasted for about four years. So this is the highest price we've seen on silver for the last three years since June of 2021. Still, it's within the range, but that price action that happened this morning actually took it above its 786 retracement. So when it closed last week, it kind of closed it right at it, maybe a penny above. Um, but now as the new day kicks off and the new week kicks off, we actually are sitting above. Let's see what the weekly candle looks like. There you go. About a penny above. Uh, and then the new week opens up and here we go. So closing out gaps over here. We'll see if it can go any higher than that. DXY. I, I wish I still had my lines on there because I did a good job keeping them on there for a month. Let's, let's see if I can just kind of like freehand draw the little lines that we've had on there for markets in the morning. Essentially like this. There, and then we had our little box. We had our little box like right in here. We're going to leave it like that. And that will now be our new lines that we end up having in there <laughs> for for this. But, and the reason we even talk about it in this manner is that our entire bull run for the cryptocurrency market all happened down in here. We had the DXY falling, but all the action happened in here. It's been kind of my hypothesis uh, for the DXY in here. Uh, still expecting that we're probably going to get that fall down uh, to eventually come in there. But hasn't been proven wrong yet. Still just waddling around in there. Uh, but otherwise, for the charts, that's how we're kicking off the week. We'll take one more look over there at the United States stock market. I don't think we said who the winners and losers are to start the day off. Coinbase, Tesla, Ford, and ARK are the winners so far this morning as we kick off the new week. The losers down there are NVIDIA, Meta, Netflix, and GE, but not by much. They're less than 1% moves. And, well, you can see Coinbase up 6, Tesla up 3, and Ford up almost 2 so there you go. That's how you kick it off. The yields have really been moving up. You know, the Fed has mentioned a lot when they're talking about, you know, people are anticipating bullish rate cuts, which, of course, you haven't seen in your life. Uh, but <laughs> they always come in the times of extreme uncertainty and despair, not to moon your bags. Um, but, you know, the Fed has said, you know, sometimes we just don't have to do anything. We, you know, using our words um, can get the market to do what we want it to do. And so the thing that the Fed has really kind of had going for it has been that its language has really gotten yields to kind of fall down on their own and to do the work for themselves. But lately, yields have been creeping back up. And so you've noticed that the language out of the Fed has become more dovish lately, right? However, we're going to get some um, inflation data this Wednesday. So we're going to be getting March's CPI data. Again, we're going to see your... Like it would take a dang miracle to not see year over year creep up again. And then the question is going to be, well, is the Fed getting what they're wanting? You got all these people who are wanting these bullish rate cuts to happen. Um, you're going to see inflation continue to creep up because inflation bottomed in June of last year. And it's just been creeping along, not able to go any lower. And it likely isn't going to go lower for the next five months. Um, so the Fed has been using much more dovish language now that this has been coming up, hoping to get the yields to be able to do what they need to do, but they haven't been buying into it. And we've actually been seeing yields really creep up here uh, for the last several weeks and months now without buying into what the Fed is saying. So 99% uh, probability that the Fed will not be cutting uh, when it comes to the May 1st meeting, uh, that we will still remain paused in there. 
Um, and the market has it at a f- about a f- little bit over 50%. It's at 52% probability that they will actually cut there in June. So the market doesn't buy it that we're even going to get it in June. So we push it on out to late July. It's like almost August, right? We're talking July 31st, the last day of July. It's got it at 70%. This is far different than what the market anticipated at the beginning of the year. Remember at the beginning of the year, it had like 100% probability for May. 100 <laughs> percent i'll be out frank with you it was 99.8 percent, i believe 99.8 and then all of these were 100s uh now not the case anymore right so uh the fed has you know i was watching danielle i mentioned this on saturday but i was watching danielle DiMartino booth which is a former advisor for the dallas fed and she said that most people missed it in the inflation uh in jerome powell's discussions that they're gonna cut rates once infl- once unemployment gets to 4%. We just had our unemployment report released last Friday, and we were at 3.9 last report. Well, guess what? We went to 3.8. So we're going the opposite way of what's supposed to happen for rate cuts. We're going, unemployment's going down, (laughs) and inflation is probably going to go up. So it's not the formula if people are thinking bullish rate cuts, uh, unlikely unlikely you're going to get bullish rate cuts. So we're still, we're just in uh, limbo here on rate cuts. Not necessarily a bad thing. We've gone through all the history of it. Whenever they're actually cutting, it's usually because S is hitting the fan. And we're, we're fortunately not there yet. So it's okay. But there you go. Bitcoin doing well to kick off the new week and uh, a good weekly close last week as well. Uh, still the million million dollar question is we will all bite our fingernails here on this channel got back to the 702 hip hip hooray we got there now we wait for the 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 big one can we get through we have earnings coming up this week it'll be the first earnings reports that we've had with the etfs being out and we'll see if we can get the exact same catalyst as we got last time when we were in this situation back in 2020 and 2021 ethereum Still fighting at the retracements. Everything's fighting at the retracements. We're looking for expansion. We need some type of uh, mystery catalyst to come along and and save the day. Uh, as for XRP, still the waddle just continues. Nothing new. All right, there you go. Gold record high. Silver above last retracement level of this range. Uh, highest price we've seen in silver for a year with the DXY. Still just waddling on along. But there you go. Let's go ahead and hop into the news over there on broader news, financial news. Nothing really big going on out here. I I didn't find anything worth really talking about in financial news. But Yellen says she won't rule out possible tariffs on China's green exports. Yellen says U.S. plans to underscore need for China to shift its policy. And China says innovations, not subsidies, are powering EV edge as Yellen raises overcapacity concerns. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, U.S. offers TSMC up to $6.6 billion for Arizona factories. Jamie Dimon says AI may be as impactful on humanity as printing press, electricity, and computers. They can't get it wrong again. Economists are increasingly uncertain on Fed rate cuts this year. The Fed always does. You, you know. Okay. Brazil Supreme Court Justice opens inquiry into Elon Musk. Yeah, there's just nothing out there in the news. We're going to move on over to crypto news. Uh, crypto, Bitcoin needs to hold above $80,000 to keep mining profitable post having. So if you don't understand how the having works, people perpetually, on Twitter, do people do anything for clicks? You got to understand that people do anything and say anything, especially in the Bitcoin community. Ah, this, it's not just a Bitcoin community, it's every community. We think we know that. Uh, they'll do anything to get clicks and attention. Uh, and in the end, false narratives pay the bills. Um, but uh, the thing you hear a lot about, in 90, I'm sure 90% of you understand this, that you know, there's an inflation that happens to Bitcoin every year. Um, essentially, you, know, you get 900 new Bitcoins uh, every day uh, that are mined and in, in inserted into the circulating supply of Bitcoin by mining. Once the halving happens, it gets cut from only 450 to down to 450 bitcoins get mined each day. It doesn't change anything to the circulating supply, which people have no problem saying. Can you believe it? The supply is going to get cut in half. No, no. Supply issuance gets cut in half. So anyway, for these miners to make any money, they're going to be getting half the bitcoins that they were 
pre-halving. So what they're making today, they're going to get half those amounts of Bitcoins afterwards. That's why people always ask me, hey, why aren't you investing in Bitcoin mining? Well, because I'm like, I don't think they can make money. <laughs> like, We're just going to be totally cool with them getting half their I'm not going to invest in any. I, like, I don't see it. It's not for me, man, to buy a company that's going to get their income, their revenue cut in half. But anyway, that's what ends up happening post having is that they get half the Bitcoin uh, per what they than what they were getting pre having. Uh, this, of course, is the the narrative, the speculation for why the price goes up is that you know they got to miners got to get paid, the price has to move up because the supply issuance goes down. Anyway, in order for these miners to make money after the having, when they're only going to get half the bitcoins that they were, the price needs to go about say above thirty eighty thousand dollars, according to Coin Telegraph, in order for them to be profitable. Plotting the path to eighty thousand dollars. Five things to know in Bitcoin this week. AI didn't kill the metaverse; it will build it. Okay, I guess they called their thing the AII. All right, Bitcoin's having won't see a 600% return this year. So adjust your strategy. Uh, Bitcoin Bollinger Band signal suggests Bitcoin to, could double by July. I won't be mad at that. Uh, Bitcoin's pretty unlikely to revisit $50,000 price level, says analyst. DYDX community approves $20 million token stake as network activity soars. Coinbase cleared in lawsuit over crypto transactions and Bitcoin halving will have to battle with weak time of the year, says Coinbase. That's true. Uh, if you guys remember from last year, what do we call the time period that we're coming up on? Many of you know it. We're about to approach it. Historically, it always is. It's a cruel summer, <laughs> right? I don't even have to read that article to know exactly what that is. Bitcoin having will have to battle with weak time of year, the cruel summer. So it, you, we typically don't have a whole lot of excitement into the summer. We're not there yet, right? We have definitely seen in the crypto market uh, excitement that can happen in April, excitement that can happen in May. And even in 2019, back in here, uh, we had excitement that still continued on into June. So we got like a little bit over halfway through June. Um, and just from my recollection, that's really the only time I remember there being anything excitement, exciting happening that deep into the summer uh, was with June, is June. Otherwise, just kind of trash uh, as we are in the summertime. So we're not there yet, um, right? But uh, just remember, we typically do end up having seasonality. There's a reason why they're... And it's not 100% foolproof, but the reason why that term out there, sell in May, go away, right? Because what comes up? The cruel summer. And that's just typical for most markets. And then by the time you get down to like September and whatnot, that's where things pick up. Even like owning companies and owning businesses, I would experience the exact same thing in business. You don't typically have, you don't, you don't make your money in the summertime. Uh, you make your money um, in the fall and in the winter. And in the summer, even for business, is typically trash too. And of course, that's going to be very industry specific, uh, but a lot of a lot of people I know uh, experience the same thing. So, anyway, still a couple of months left before we get there. We'll see how things go once we do. All right, there we go. Moving over to CoinDesk, uh, crypto stocks gain as Bitcoin top seventy two k for the first time since March. Well, it's only April eighth, but okay. Uh, Crypto-related companies look looked set to start the week on a positive note. MicroStrategy should continue to rally as Bitcoin having nears benchmark. JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon's annual letter, interest rates could go far higher than many expect. Dimon believes investors are being overly optimistic with respect to the chance of an economic soft landing. Hmm. Writing that to their own investors. Like we said, like, I don't know if the market has realized it. And, you know, I'm not a Fed expert. <laughs> I just play one in a fantasy land. Uh, that they seem checkmated. I don't know, man. They seem checkmated. Inflation's not going to go down. And if unemployment's not rising, why will they cut? If we don't have any economic turmoil and inflation is returning, why would they cut? 
because our bags. <laughs> they need to pump our bags. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, again, back to crypto. Uh, Bitcoin, $72,000. Uh, again, nice weekly candles in there. Uh, closing about, you know, struggling to close the weekly candles above the previous all-time high. Last week got all the way down to 64000 Even when we did markets in the morning on Saturday, we were still at sixty-seven. But then Sunday, as we go in for the close, we're able to close above the all-time high. And then boom, there's a nice little pop happening right there. So we'll talk about this in the video that I will be releasing here within an hour after markets in the morning is completed. And we'll talk more about uh, the altcoin market and all that good and glorious stuff happening in there. Otherwise, a nice start to see some green happening here uh, as we kick off the week. A nice weekly candle close there for Bitcoin and a nice reaction here happening on a Monday morning. So we'll see how things go as the week progresses. And uh, I'm feeling pretty chipper. I'm feeling pretty good and ready to rock this week. So... Uh, that's pretty much it from uh, how we're starting. One more look over there at the stock market really fast. The Dow Jones up 67 points. The S&P up 0.6 points. The RTY up 8 points. And the NASDAQ down 16. Slightly up to flat. It's kind of only the NASDAQ is down 0.1%. All the other indexes are up about 0.1% or flat. So mixed day, but Coinbase, look at that. Coinbase is the leader with Tesla and Ford. Losers are NVIDIA, Meta. I'll re reorganize that. Losers are GE, NVIDIA, Meta, and Netflix. And the winners are Coinbase, Tesla, and ARC and Ford as we kick off this beautiful Monday morning. I guess I should mention today is a solar eclipse. So these, at least here in the United States, uh, depending, I guess that would also occur in Mexico too and other places, maybe parts of Canada and other places as well. Anyway, the, the moon is going to block out the sun. So I'm sure a lot of people are out uh, doing that thing today. So <laughs> Shani Omac 324 zero in all caps is the eclipse good or bad for crypto there's a lot of uh <laughs> there's a lot of astrology people out there <laughs> who do have beliefs on one way or the other so we'll see if that is i i believe a lot of forecasts have said that today is supposed to be chaotic uh due to the eclipse and that that's not for me but we'll see right we'll see how things go So, okay, there you go. That's what you got today, guys. You got a good start there for Bitcoin with weekly candle closes looking good. We're still going to be biting those fingernails as we head into the new week with the altcoin market and the market in general looking for some type of expansion to happen after it's already hit the 702 Fibonacci retracement. We see those same things over here for Ethereum as well for the altcoin market. We're all waiting for things to get going and get moving. Uh, but we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can get a catalyst happening this week. Again, we're heading into earnings season. If they're looking for some type of surprise narrative, uh, that would be that would be a pretty good one to have, and that would kind of go through the whole month of April. So we'll see how things go. Otherwise, welcome to the new week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna hop on into the chat, and uh, we'll get through this pretty quickly. That way, I can go ahead and get the video exported, uploaded. And we all can, I can get you on your way to go watch the eclipse if that's what you're going to end up doing today. But all right, Crypto Student 99, before the stream even started, had gifted five memberships. Man, thank you very much. I appreciate it, brother. If your name flipped green, there you go. And we'll get, we'll get a member stream in this week, you guys. Uh, KB gifted five BCB memberships as well. KB, thank you. He did that uh, two minutes before the stream, or actually three minutes after the stream started. Thank you very much. Jonas Fugalis, do you think Bitcoin can be doing a B wave right now? Thanks for everything you do, BCB. Uh, I'm assuming your question is this. A, B, C, right? It could. It could. Um, I would say things that are interesting, though, is how these weekly candles are performing in here and how they're holding themselves right now. And that's very interesting to see that when you see when you see behavior like that occur. 
Um, again, I'm actually, I am more of a believer that if you are going to reference any time in the past in here um, and say, hey, we're acting like previous cycles or whatnot, and if we are going to reference them, well, your, your brain would kind of immediately head to right over here, right? It'd be like, hey, look, we kind of struggled here at these weekly closes and we held above it and then we shot up and we went our way to go. There's similarities there. I actually can present the case though that like what we're doing right here is way more like we're right along here, uh, just from Bitcoin behavior, on-chain behavior, and altcoin market behavior that we're much further along. But it's interesting to see, like we have seen this kind of stuff before. You get through and you kind of creep through and you're holding these closes. We've we've seen that before too. So I'm not fully convinced that it has to go down at this point uh, to do that ABC. Um, but and like typically if we were going to see ABCs, usually you're going to struggle a little bit lower than this, right? So you've kind of already gotten through all retracement levels in here. Typically, like if we're going to ABC, we're going to find it just in Bitcoin in general, right? Like every asset you look at, you know, everything is going to have its own different kind of reactions. Bitcoin is typically pretty consistent that it's either going to stop at 702 or it's going to stop at 786. It's actually even rare, rare. And with many assets, they only get to 50% and that's where they do it from. Or 618. Like these are your three most common. 618, 702, and 786. That's your three most common. But even for Bitcoin, the 618 is actually uncommon. The most common is 702 and 786 for B leg to go on to C. That's Bitcoin's just historical behavior. So this is unusual behavior, if that would be the case. Sorry, hit the mic. It would be unusual behavior to go into a C leg from here after after getting above these levels. And so like here, we'll go back and look at some examples in here. Show you like ABCs, right? So this would be like an ABC correction, right? A, B, C, right? Uh, it would be, un it's uncommon for Bitcoin to get out, right? And then go. So it's like kind of like, Bitcoin's more like this right now, right? Like that, like if you saw something like this, this, and like this actually came up here, right? That, that's more of the price. It's not typical behavior of what happens in an ABC correction for Bitcoin. Um, move over to this one. Right? This is an A, B, C correction. This one may only be a 618. No, it's a 702, right? So A, B, and C, right? That's typical behavior. So you head over here. Holy cow. That's not, right, not really what we see for ABCs for Bitcoin to act like that based on what how I just showed them to you. So less convinced, you know what I mean? It would be a very, very, very high B leg for it to be. Uh, Martin Kelly, member for three months, says, Hey, BCB, thanks for all that you do. I'm loving your course and learning loads. And have you got any shows or visits planned in the UK this year or next? No, I don't. Um, but it's not, uh, I don't have any this year. And, but I never know where the world's going to take me. It's been real weird. The first, you know, three years of doing this, it was really just kind of in my own shell, um, in my own computer room, doing my thing. And uh, really the first time I decided to venture out was in like November or December of 2022. Yeah, that's when it is. It was post FTX collapse because that's when I was in Miami, Florida, when SBF was doing his, like S, uh, FDX had already collapsed in November. It's December. I'm in Miami and SBF is going around doing all those Twitter spaces that he was doing and just like running circles around people asking questions on how he would dodge everything. And I remember being in my hotel room and listening to SBF on those Twitter spaces and taking a picture in front of the FTX arena there in Miami. And that's the first time I, I decided to go out and like do things in real life as blockchain backer. 
And then, you know, then decided to go to Consensus in Austin and then go to XRP Las Vegas in Las Vegas. And then just went to Australia and then going back to Las Vegas. And so I don't know. Like, I'm definitely not opposed to going to the UK. I'd love to go to the UK, but I don't have anything in the pipe right now. But it's not unusual that things don't just kind of like show up as an opportunity uh, just a few months before they show up. Uh, Andy, uh, thanks for all your work, BCB. Question, why isn't the March 28th, 2022 high of 48K considered a retracement of the 2021 highs? So March 28th of 2022 considered a retracement of the 2021. It, you would consider that more of like B leg. We're talking about this one. It is a retrace. So you'd have to go through, if you haven't been here through all of the nonsense of figuring out what was so different about this market, it's having to recognize what happened. And so we've gone through this a lot. I even talked about this a lot in my presentation that I did in Australia, that the market top is back here. Right. This is the top of the market. And you can see this is capitulation. Right. And so our actual retrace in the rally, it's actually this. And the whole market got tricked by it of it happening right here and then going to a new high and then having this happen back in here. And that it's like we were actually super ridiculously deep into a bear along the way. And let me see if I can pull this up really quick. Because I have this here. Because I'm not, I, can't, I don't have time in markets in the morning to build charts. But I can take this from the presentation I did in Australia. How many remember this as well? So by the time we were in here, we were also acting like we were deep in the depths of a bear market already. Right? So all the peak, all the euphoria is all back here. This is actually just tail endings, pre-capitulation price falling. And this and, and mentally hard to wrap your head around, but that moment right there is really just that moment right there. That's all that is prior to capitulating. And why the market struggled so hard and even, even difficult for me that we go set a new high here with bear structure when typically when we have these bear structures, we're way down depths of, of bear. So it's kind of like this all happening in here. But instead of this happening right here, this goes like this. <laughs> all that does this thing and then capitulate. And that's what we ended up having happen here. And get this. Sorry, I'm just grabbing the PowerPoint screenshots that I delivered in Australia. And that's what you end up having, the capitulation. So it's because of the, the fact that we were actually in a bear with a new all-time high for Bitcoin. That's what. I've been thinking about that I need to make a video on this thing. It's 108 slides long. But probably something you guys would want to see, right? Okay. All right, me Jules company, uh, Eclipse goes through all seven Nevehas, humility days. Okay. Uh, Pitbull says, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin dominance? It seems to go up. Okay, so what are your thoughts on this? This is always my favorite answer. What are your thoughts on all the altcoins excluding the top 10 going up? <laughs> How is that possible? How is it possible that Bitcoin dominance is going up yet 
the altcoin market is up 100% in dominance. Right? It's because Bitcoin.d paints like a false narrative and it's super, super tied to Ethereum and altcoins. So I think we've done like big videos on this that, you know, what has happened with the altcoin, like this thing has ranged since January 1st, right? So since January 1st, this thing has just been stuck in here, but nothing's really changed, right? So the big outperformance of the altcoin market takes place from June all the way until the start of this year. And now since the start of this year, it's just been ranging right in here, right? So um, Bitcoin D very much focused on Ethereum, right? So if Ethereum over Bitcoin is drifting down, Bitcoin dom Bitcoin dot D goes up and everybody says, the dominance of Bitcoin is raging. <laughs> but if you remove Ethereum and if you remove stable coins, you suddenly get a very different picture. So I would, and I've done videos on that, on how misleading Bitcoin.d is. So I'd highly uh, advise checking those videos out. Otherwise, can somebody explain to me, how can Bitcoin dominance be setting a new high when the altcoin market has gained back double its dominance over the last year? It's because of the way Bitcoin.d is calculated, how dependent it is on Ethereum and the stablecoin market. It's an illusion. All right. I believe uh, JJ Jacob, ten, member for 10 months, says, I believe Others is about to start wave three of three. Similarities to January 2nd, where wave four will be a cruel summer, wave five in autumn, then Doomtown. Any thoughts on the count? All right. So I, I've played with waves, right? And so like, yeah, I can imagine multiple waves happening in here, whether that's wave, that's actually wave three, and this could be wave four in here. But your argument is that this was actually wave one. Is that correct? I believe others is about to start wave three of three, uh, wave three of three, similarly to January of 2021. I, I skipped Dave's guy. I'll get back to you, Dave's guy. Sorry. Wave three of three, similar to January of 2021. Wave four would be the cruel summer. And wave five in autumn and then Doomtown. What are your thoughts on the count? The thing that confuses me is that you say wave three of three. Right, you could argue it's right. Let's like like let's just play with the waves here, right? So like here you are in uh, twenty twenty, right? So you, like if you counted these out, one, two, three, four, five, right? Like Wave three of three, similar to tw January of 2021. I'm just not following, following the wave three of three thing. If you just look at where others is right now in relation to where Bitcoin is at right now, I mean, this is where you are, right? If this is what you're saying, I mean, that's kind of the argument that I keep presenting every day is that if Bitcoin is bullish, where would it be if you compare that to another time and that the argument of it being here is much more difficult than the argument of it being right here, which is January of 2021, right? So where you have the altcoin market is like where it's at in January of 2021 when it comes to retracement levels, right? That's where we've gotten ourselves back up into is where it's just fighting around 702, just fighting around all of that stuff. So similarities, yes. Uh, Dave's guy says, hey, BCB, you might cover this in today's video, but if it's not a B leg, 
what are common areas for retraces for more upside or failed breakout confirmations, right? So at, at this point for me, it's just going to be about on Bitcoin. If we just keep going back through them, right? Like this should be like an accumulation schematic. We shouldn't be dipping back down here or else it's just going to be a sloppy range right right now it's still just a range but if we go back through all these retracement levels all over again then you don't have trending right and that's what we're all looking for we're all looking for trending and if we start losing these things again then we're not trending we're still just sloppy ranging so the all three of these levels have the possibilities of them being struggle points really probably this level right here in particular. It's a previous all-time high. It's also resistance level right here. It's support levels, it's resistance levels, it's support levels. Probably if you go back below here and close daily candles down in here, which there's even a gap there to go wicket, that's probably it. And unfortunately, when you're still ranging, you still have all those possibilities because ranges by design are chaotic and you're not in a trend. If we got into new all-time highs, then we can start being like, all right, now we have ranging or now we have trending, but we, we are still in here. But for me, more like back down here, if you get back through here, then you open up the door again for lows. The thing that Bitcoin has going for it still is that there hasn't been a trend change in regards to these lows. All these lows still continue to hold in here. So technically, it's still grinding. Um, but for this whole particular range, if we shifted back down below here, start to get concerned again that we have a deeper correction. But that's how I play these, right? I play these with retracement levels. Everybody has their own strategy. People are, a lot of people, we haven't even been doing these things lately, right? There's gonna be a lot of people who are just using moving averages, right? So there's your daily 50 moving average, right? There's gonna be people who use that as their support level in there. Cause there's a lot of people who do that. There's gonna be a lot of buying pressure that comes in to try to buy on top of a 50 day moving average, whether that's daily, you shift down even lower. Right, so now you have a confluence of these two coming in right in here on the on the eight hour time frame, and on the four hour time frame you have all three. Right, so you have all three of them coming in down here. Will they come in and provide some type of support down in here at these levels at the same time? And usually that's the way you need to look at it. Do you have multiple things at the same time? If you go cracking moving averages, you go cracking fibs. Those would be multiple confluence things at the same time. Uh, Abe the Brave, GMX is looking like Ethereum did in the FTX collapse. Do you think it's a good buy? I love the channel. Well, first of all, the first thing I have to go do is see if this is a rank number 400 coin. <laughs> rank 200. So I don't know what this is. I don't know. I Let me see. Abe the Brave, I... It's so borderline on doing it. One, I have no idea what this thing is. Okay, it is rank 200. It's only on Kraken. Okay, Coinbase doesn't offer it. The liquidity even here on Kraken looks like trash. And one other thing, sure, it structurally looks like Wyckoff in here, but you would expect it to have a little more strength than that with what other things are doing, right? Most assets in this market have gotten beyond this phase, right? Like most assets in this market have already done this and it's like they're here. This is way, way, way behind and there's no real interest in this asset at this point, right? Like, um, we remember we brought B and B up a lot 
a lot in markets in the morning to kind of poke fun at that they're all going to be wrong. That this is spring. Do you guys remember how much of it was Binance Coin's going to collapse? Binance going to collapse. It's the next. It's the next contagion that we're all going to experience. And it was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. All right. And there it is, right? And this oval was put on here when price was still down here. Uh, but even you can see this one, we're so far beyond that. Like just assets in general shouldn't, you wouldn't think they should be down there in that phase. So that's kind of what your question is. Just from a market per, market perspective, you would think it shouldn't be there still. You would think there would be some type of strength emerging in that asset at this point. Um, and the fact that it never shows up in any type of user activity levels and never shows up in any type of development activity level data and stuff like that. Um, yeah. To each their own, right? Some dude had to come in here the other last week and say, ha, you wouldn't talk about my rank 600 coin. Now look at it. It's rank 89. Eh, you know, I'm going to get one wrong. <laughs> you know, it's going to happen. Uh, but I, I don't know. It, it, you would think it'd have some more strength. <laughs> Hugh D says, now that you've been to Australia, do you A, like cricket or B, love it? <laughs> I didn't get to see any cricket when I was in Australia, uh, but with how big of a baseball fan I am, I'm sure I would love cricket. Unfortunately, there is no cricket here in the United States. It's really bizarre. It's like the second biggest sport in the world. We don't have it here. I don't understand. You would think cricket would like be a thing and it looks really cool. But we don't, we don't have cricket here, and I didn't get to see any cricket in um, in Australia. But to the cricket people, I will tell you this. We would probably be best friends because I love baseball, and cricket looks a lot like baseball with different rules, but it looks fun. So I like cricket, even though I know nothing about cricket. I think it's probably awesome. So I love it, even though I know nothing about it. Mr. Somebody, the only ABC I see is on March 2020. If you inverted it, it looks like it hit the 702. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all your teachings, BCB. You are greatly appreciated. Um, the only ABC I see is, is on March of 20. If you invert it and look at it, it hit the 702. March of 20. I don't see anything in March of 20. But even here, like we had one here. I remember this. And we'll talk about this. We talked about this in today's video too, this area right here. But it was the same thing, <laughs> right? ABC correction. For the, the person who asked earlier today, A, B, C, right? Bottom, grind. Off and away you go. Uh, Bread Garlic has his thoughts on Flare. Looks like it's way behind the market. You guys were all cheering that you were killing it a month ago. <laughs> you guys were all cheering Flare. Yeah, I, I'm not a big. Uh, we we don't really talk much about Flare on here. I'm not a big fan. A uh, big fan. I, I had somebody tag me. Why doesn't blockchain backer talk about Flare? Do you want me to talk about Flare? Because every time I do, I say stuff you don't want to hear. <laughs> and no, 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 don't. Okay, that's enough. You're done. <laughs> don't talk about it. <laughs> and then it was like, why isn't he talking about Flare assets? Why isn't he talking about F assets? And then somebody was like, well, do you have F assets? No, but they're coming. You want me to, they want me to pump the bag. That's what they want. <laughs> nah, I'm always going to be bitter towards Flare. Always. I've been doing YouTube videos since 2019. I was here doing the live stream during the Flare snapshot. And then Flare rug pulled the XRP community in regards to distribution of the assets. I will always maintain that. They rug pulled. So, Brett, garlic house. Love you, buddy. <laughs> but don't ask about Flare, anybody, if you don't want the true... Uh, Answer from me, because <laughs> you'll get it. Uh, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, JP Estrada, member for five months. BCB, is XRP an 80 day first cousins? And does that mean Charles is the true supreme commander? Love your work also. Happy birthday. Dude, I almost for thought people would forget today is my birthday. You guys have been forgetting my last birthdays, but finally somebody remembered it. <laughs> Asterisk X, I got all my flair. Shrugs, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> You've been distributed like one third of it. Okay. Uh, JB Estrada, uh, thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Finally, happy birthday. Finally, thank you. Okay. <laughs> what are we at? We're at 54 minutes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start going through the wrap up process of all of this. Uh, I'm excited for what's to come uh, for the channel. I. I, I think uh, I, the last couple of days have been gone working on plans to kind of help uh, take some of the back end stuff off of me uh, so that way uh, we can put out more videos. That's the, the meat and bones of this YouTube channel is YouTube videos. It's something I enjoy doing, uh, but as you guys know, those have been spotty for months on end because my load has been way too much uh, for me to handle. And... Uh, so I've been gone for a few days working on uh, solutions to that. And I believe we have figured out solutions. And uh, even right out the gates, here we go. We got a video here. And we'll, we'll see how many we can get out this week. But uh, yeah, anyway, check out the newsletter over here. I put one out about a week ago. And we kind of go through a lot of the different stuff going on in the crypto market. And the things that are positive, uh, like things that we're talking about here, things that are positive in the market. You have a lot of positive signs in the market. But at the same time, you have a lot of things that are very different. And, you know, for me, it's less about fantasies. It's less about narratives. It's less about what story can we make up uh, about the market when we have good data to go back on. And so we go through a lot of the data in there and talk about where we're at with crypto and uh, how we're doing and things that are very positive and then things that are very different. And that's just where we're at. It comes with a 29 minute audio recording. So I do audio record all of these and voice over them. So if you're in your car, which I know a lot of people listen to, truck drivers as well. I've got lots of truck drivers, it's awesome, uh, who just jam <laughs> the BCB podcast practically. Um, and if you want to listen to this while you're driving your vehicle or you're out running your errands or in the grocery store and you're like, I don't want to listen to these other people and I'm going to be in my own world listening to BCB, you could do that uh, as well. Um, but of course, if you'd like to read along, uh, I do go into detail and talk about the charts that are going on in here. So we stop for a second. I talk about the charts that are going on. Anyway, 29 minute audio recording with this. There's 37 newsletters. So if you sign up for the newsletter uh, subscription, you also get access to all the past ones, which I believe there's 37. Uh, you can check this out over there on blockchainbacker.substack.com. There's a ton of these in here. You can check all of them out from the past as well. I do lots of studies and data data driven stuff in there but that's all available for there blockchainbacker.substack.com of course you guys all know it bcbacker.com for 40 videos and 11 hours of content teaching you how to set up your own charts and indicators and trading view and coin trader bro dang it daniel he said i skipped your question oh here we go <laughs> daniel hey bro did you expect tia to have this much of a pullback sure almost 50 percent down from its all-time high is it normal behavior in case if you should give a higher I think we probably talked about it a hundred times that crypto always pulls down at least 50%. <laughs> definitely, man. If you're new to the market and you're like, hey, is 50% normal? It definitely is. It definitely is. So the big question is if we're going to resume uptrends here and, and continue into expansions. I don't think it's a TIA problem. It's a crypto problem in general right now to get through expansions. But is 50% normal? Definitely. Pick your favorite assets. Here's how you, you should learn. Pick your favorite assets and then go look at their drawdowns in 2020's bull market. Then do the same thing in 2017's bull market. It gives you, if you have never done that, and that's what one of these things in here, like understanding the historical behavior of the cryptocurrency market. People walk into this volatile asset class and think, I'm going to make 10,000% because some dude put $200 into a meme coin and he made 5 million. That's going to be me. But I'm only going to suffer 5 to 7% drawdowns. Every single person in this chat knows that's not true. <laughs> you are going to suffer massive drawdowns in this market. And it always happens. It's the most volatile market in the entire world. But you have to ask yourself, is it normal to be in a bull trend and still have that type of volatility? And that's why it's really important to go back and study the historical behavior of the crypto market to know 
that you do end up getting those large pullbacks to happen, uh, even in bull trends. Uh, that 40, 50, 60%, they definitely happen. They definitely don't feel good uh, when they do happen, but trying to identify, are you still in a bull trend? And that's where we're at right now, trying to identify, can we go into expansion and continue this to be a bull trend? That's what we need the answer for. For your TIA question, if we expand, sure, let's go. And 50%, 100% normal. There you go, bro. I got you. All right. Alira Demi, message retracted, whatever it said. <laughs> but guys, thank you all so much for watching. Again, check out the newsletter. Check out bcbacker.com. Have an absolutely wonderful day and keep your eyes open for a YouTube video released within an hour from now. Otherwise, we made this thing one hour on the dot. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you could, please like this live stream and give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need to pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.